Yeah, uh, in this week uh, we are discussing uh, measurements and I would continue my discussion on uh, two aspects of measurements which are very important to dynamic signals which we are using out of rotating machines that is what is known as the dynamic range and frequency response. You will see that in rotating machines or machines which are in operation, the signals in general are time varying. This is a typical signal which comes out of a time varying uh, or op a machine which is operating with time in time. So, if in such a machine I put a transducer this transducer will is also going to measure this signal, but the transducer itself is a mechanical system. Okay. So, the transducer will have a stiffness, will have a mass, may have some sort of a damping inherent in it. So, the transducer itself is a second order system some force as a function of time. Okay. Now, I am interested in finding out the signal because of this machine which is x t. I do not want this signal to be contaminated by the characteristics of this transducer which could be a represented by a second order differential equation. Okay. So, to avoid the transducers characteristics corrupt my signal x t, I need to understand the transducers characteristics. Okay. Now, if you will recall for a single degree freedom system as the frequency response r, okay, some output by input, if my input was a signal which had an flat amplitude at all frequencies. My output ideally should have been flat, but this will not happen because of the transducer. So, this peak is at the transducer's resonant frequencies. So, every transducer would have a resonant frequency. So, in the specs, this is the useful frequency range of the transducer. That means, whatever is the input coming from my machine onto the transducer, the same thing is going to come as an output. Okay. Now, obviously, this resonant frequency f n of the transducer will depend on k, mass, damping etcetera. And you know f n is 1 by 2 pi root over k by m. Okay. So, that means, you will later on see for a system or a transducer with large mass has a low 
natural frequency or vice versa small mass has a high natural frequency. Now, I will give you an example. See, every transducer has some sort of sensing element in it. Like say for example, a piezoelectric crystal. So, the more the piezoelectric crystal, the more would be the sensitivity. So, high sensitivity of a transducer means high sensitivity means large mass. So, that means low natural frequency. So, and the vice versa again. So, if the same transducer I have a large size same transducer I have a smaller size. So, this will have a high sensitivity, low natural frequency and will have a high mass or heavy and similar device versa here low sensitivity because of a low mass and it has a high natural frequency. High natural frequency means a higher measurement useful frequency range. So, if you look into the catalog of manufacturers selling you transducers, you will see for the same type of transducer there will be you know, different types of transducer with you know, different serial numbers etcetera. Some have high mass, some have you know, high sensitivity, some have high frequency. So, you uh, the reason behind this is because of omega n is equal to root over k by m and you can work around the frequency response of the system. Right? Now, related to this there is another term which is known as the range. The range of a transducer is nothing but the maximum value it can measure and from it the difference between the maximum and minimum minimum value. So, in log scale the dynamic range is actually given as is nothing but 10 logarithm to the 10 max value by mean value. Okay. So, the maximum value could be uh, no one max if the maximum value is the minimum value is 1 maximum value is 100. So, log it will be log of 100 uh, log of 100 is 2 to the base uh, log of 100 to the base 10 is 2. So, this will be 20 decibels. Okay. So, such uh, transducers are available and typically now we have transducers from 100 to 180 dB maybe okay and so on when you talk about you know human hearing of course the reference values are different so that means how much of a value you can measure how large to how small but another very important thing comes in the measurement chain and that is when I am measuring any thing out of a machine, I put my transducer 
but in between there is a signal conditioner and then there is a display. and this is my transducer. Now, suppose my transducer can measure all the way from 0 to 100 kilohertz, right or okay. I have a signal conditioner which and I have this cable, cable is also a system because you know cables are coaxial, they have a lot of capacitance in them. So, there is they have a frequency response and of course, are very high, but one has to be very careful about the voltage drop you know because I was telling you in the previous class, if there is a voltage drop I would not know how much the actual value from the transducer has attenuated because of the voltage drop. So, that is why we had that provision of field calibration wherein we gave a known mechanical input and saw the output. But leaving aside that, suppose I have a signal conditioner now whose frequency response is only from 20 hertz to maybe 50 kilohertz. Okay. So, obviously, you would be asking. So, when I say I display a certain value, so I can not say that whatever value I get x volts, it is from 0 to 100 kilohertz, because if it was from 0 to 100 kilohertz, because this signal conditioner is not going to respond to anything below 20 hertz or anything above 50 kilohertz. You may be having values from 50 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, but that would not get uh, propagated because the signal conditioner it has a limitation. So, one has to be very careful that if I have got a very wide range transducer I need to have corresponding signal conditioners which are also wide range like an amplifier, but usually the vice versa works. The, trans the signal conditioners or the amplifiers have a very wide frequency response, the transducers are different. For example, I cannot be using a microphone which measures from 20 hertz to only 10 kilohertz microphones and use an amplifier from 0 hertz to 50 kilohertz amplifier and say that my measurements are good from 0 hertz to 20 kilohertz. No, because the transducer has a sensitivity only from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And so, since the amplifier measures from 0 hertz to 50 kilohertz, so it has covered the entire microphone, but then I cannot say for sure that I am measuring till 20 kilohertz because my microphone has limited till the value is still 10 kilohertz. So, this is the idea I wanted to drive home regarding the significance of frequency response in dynamic measurements. But usually I am asked this question. So, for CBM out of rotating machines, what should be the measured frequency range? Well, measured frequency range depends on the source, source of the machine, source of signals in the machine. So, if I talk about mechanical signals, say for example, an electrical motor giving in vibration signals, 
an IC engine, a gas turbine, human audible range, ultrasonics, sonars. So, I will give you a reason what is the typical frequency range of these signals. So, for an electrical motor all the phenomena occurs around the electrical supply frequency and few harmonics. So, for if you are monitoring the signals out of an electric motor vibrations a 0 to 2000 hertz is good enough. If you are talking about IC engines, engine firing frequencies we know how we can calculate the engine firing frequency and a typical maximum speed of an IC engine even at the highest uh, RPM of its power delivery could be around 5000, 6000 RPM unless you are talking about the formula 1 uh, sports car engines you know that could go up to maybe 13000, 15000 RPM. So, these frequencies are very good from about 0 to 5000 hertz talk about gas turbines you know some working around 30,000 rpm and so on maybe 0 to 10,000 hertz. Human hearing so 20 to 20,000 hertz. Ultrasonics as the name says anything beyond 20 kilohertz. So, maybe 20 kilohertz to ultrasonics are also used in sonar maybe 1 megahertz or 2 megahertz. Sonars usually they are ultrasonic beams 50 kilohertz to maybe 500 kilohertz or few me or I can say it 1 megahertz ok. And then of course, you know uh, another thing like acoustic emission etcetera we will talk about them later on. So, you get a feel of the typical frequency range of the signals which come out of such rotating machines and then one has to decide on the appropriate transducer having these kind of frequency response. So, that the phenomena physical phenomena is actually captured. No matter what we do with measurements we may be having very sophisticated accurate and precise transducers to measure the phenomena, but then if you are not measuring in the right frequency our measurements has uh, uh, no meaning, because I need to capture the uh, signal. So, once of course, we have captured the signal and of course, if you want to do processing it I will just recollect in our data acquisition system. If my maximum frequency is f max I need to always sample at a frequency f s which is greater than twice f max. So, my sampling frequency has to be such that I obey I avoid signal aliasing. Right. Now, once we know we are talk about dynamic range of an equipment or a transducer. So, the we have looked just looked in the x axis, but the dynamic range also should also we should look in the y axis that the dynamic range of the lowest dynamic range or the lowest frequency response is the frequency response of your measurement chain and lowest dynamic range is the dynamic uh, lowest lowest dynamic range is the dynamic range of your measurement chain. So, every transducer or every device in the measurement chain must have dr known to us and a frequency response known to us ok. 
and then the lowest of it is the frequency response because I cannot be measuring. Otherwise, you know, computer systems are they will give you some garbage output to a garbage input. For example, when you talk about data acquisition, we see that the how the amplitude resolution could be improved some input voltage by 2 to the power n, when n is the bit size. So, if I if I am able to sense higher values, I need to increase the bit size. So, this is what I meant by range. So, unless I am able to sense the amplitude resolution, my, my, my amplitude resolution is fine enough to sense the signal, I would not be registering such a signal and that is why if you recollect in the measurements of temperature, using thermocouple, we always had an amplifier with a gain in it. Okay. So, that this would be registered in the and many a times we discuss this in the case of digital data recording or data recording. I have some signal, okay, very high dynamic range signal, because your tape recorder also comes between your transducer machine, transducer, some recording tape recorder or recorder, and then of course, we will get an output. The so, I have a very high signal with a very high dynamic range, but if my tape recorder is not able to record at such high dynamic range, I will not reproduce such a high dynamic range signal. So, that is why people nowadays you know they are moved from this analog tapes to digital recording. because of the high dynamic range. Okay. And once, because see, I would, would not see my final aim is my machine, whatever it is generating signal, I need to either measure, record and interpret. the signal correctly. So, for doing this and particularly dynamic signals, one needs to be aware of the limitations of the transducers in terms of their dynamic range and frequency response, know what their sensitivity is, when they were calibrated and what are the environmental factors or extraneous factors which could be contaminating our measurements. For example, particularly when we are measuring dynamic signals, the signal to noise ratio is a very important parameter SNR. So, for example, I have a transducer which is measuring something on a machine, but then I have a cable which is because of its movement generating certain charge and creating noise. Okay. So, a neat signal at the transducer end could be getting contaminated because 
signal this is signal plus cable noise the reason i am mentioning this you know this is because of the fact that i have experienced this myself you know doing measurements in the field that one has to be very careful about the quality of the signal quality of the dynamic signal as to the signal to noise ratio okay so this are issues which we will uh, understand of course today uh, many of these signals in the right at the transducer level if i have the wireless data acquisition and then of course you know transfer data many of these problems are getting solved but for the fact that there also we have problems which is known as band limited i told you the data transfer rate data transfer rate is a big hindrance to the present day state of the art which is improving okay so these are issues one has to keep in mind so that uh, bottom line is wrong measurement is no measurement don't spend money on buying a transducer which has been not understood which has been wrongly mounted and uh, which is being operated in a specs it is not designed for and we are trying to interpret data as if everything is correct and mind you this is if we have measured data correctly analysis will follow uh, depending on the algorithms which you use but a uh, very most important aspects in cbm is to measure all the signals from the machine correctly unless we measure data signals correctly everything is of no use to us thank you so more on this you can find in my book thank you